This is the all-new Cinebeam 4K LG Ultra Short Throw Projector. It's the HU715Q and it delivers an amazing 120-inch image from just over 31 centimeters away from the wall. Now this could be your perfect TV choice, it has webOS built in and far more. Let's take a closer look. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. So later in this video we'll take a look at how this does in HDR mode, in daylight mode and give you a real feel for how it is for things like airplay or just watching normal standard TV. Okay so for now it's time to get this thing unboxed and so I can show you exactly what you're getting for your money. So this projector, the HU715Q, is the more affordable version of the LG Cinebeam HU85LS, which is the three laser variety. Now this is still pretty special and I'll go into a lot more details. Just for full disclosure, I've been sent this to review for LG, but I'm not being sponsored and I'm not being asked to say anything good or bad about it. Now I'm a really big fan of these ultra short throw laser projectors. This one weighs in at just over 11 kilos, so it's a little bit chunky, but in form factor, it's actually smaller than the number out there at the moment. And the design, well, I think that this is one of the nicest designs of any ultra short throw projector that I've seen. I really like the clean, simple lines, and I love the fact that this is white, and the material which houses the speakers is also that light grey, which again is pretty good looking. What do you think? Do you think that this is the type of projector that you could get used to? When you look at the projector face on, you literally don't see any markings at all. The only thing that is visible is the little sensor, which houses the on and off standby light, and also the remote sensors. The minimal streamlined design continues both around the sides and also on the back, where you have the power socket on one side and then your connections on the other. Speaking of connections, here you do get three HDMI ports, which is great to see. One of these is actually an HDMI 2.1, and then you have two HDMI 2.0s, one of which, HDMI 2, is your eARC stroke ARC port. There's also two USBs, and you have your optical digital out and your LAN port. Any of you that have had an LG TV from the last few years will notice that you do get a magic remote. Now this one is a little bit different, I'll show you that in a second. Not only has it got the black back, but as it's a projector, this one is backlit. Now that is a big difference and I think it looks absolutely stunning. Again, one of my favourite remotes ever is the LG Magic Remote and the fact that this is now backlit, well, that is a good thing. As you can see, the rest of the contents are fairly minimal, so it's now time to place this in front of your screen and get it set up. By the way, you can project this straight onto a wall, but we do recommend an ALR screen as that will give you the very best image. The recommended screen size is from 80 inches up to 120 inches. And as I mentioned earlier, you can get a big screen from just a few centimeters away. 80 inches from just 11.8 centimeters. If you want 100 inches, then it's just 21.7 centimeters. And a 120 inch screen is just 31.7 centimeters away. Fantastic. So it's advisable to position the projector as close to filling your screen if you have one as possible because any digital distortion that you do will affect your image quality. However, I'm pretty close on mine so I'm going to let it run so that I can just show you the whole setup process. So first of all, connect the remote just by pressing the button in the middle and then add your Wi-Fi password. So I'm setting mine up in daylight hours and as you can see the light that coming in from behind is quite significant and I've got those two lamps underneath. So that just gives you an idea of how this performs in lighter conditions. Follow a few of the screens. Now if you want to you can connect some other peripherals to it but I'm just going to go straight with nothing connected at all at the moment just to show you how you can set up the screen. Any of you that are familiar with webOS will recognize the screen that you're presented with when you start because everything in there is exactly the same as what it is on one of their TVs. So again, just like their TVs, all of the settings functions are very similar to the TV setup. The only difference on this one is that you do have an option for projector. And it's in this one where you'll go in and we'll change the screen. And I'll do that in just a second. One thing to point out is that if you do see any flickering on this screen, that is just the frequency of my camera recording. And in reality, there is no evidence or sign of any type of flicker at all with 
the actual projector. The first thing that we're going to go into is edge adjustment and this is where you have the option for either 4, 9 or 15 points of drag and that means that you've got those little circles where you can drag the little points to fill the screen and obviously the more buttons that you have the more accurate it will be. I feel that 9 is probably about right because that gives you both the middle on the horizontal and also the middle on the vertical. This would be 15 but that may be just a little bit overkill. So I've just sped this up so that you can see how the screen is being dragged in to fit my screen that's on the wall. By the way, an ALR screen is an ambient light rejecting screen. That gives you the best possible brightness from this type of projector, which projects from underneath. Now, as you can see, the picture is fitting perfectly to that screen and it looks super bright. Now I mentioned that the menu system is very similar to those found on their latest TVs and it is. When you go into the picture mode you'll see that you've got vivid, standard cinema, sports, game optimizer, filmmaker mode, brightest and expert bright room and expert dark room. The one difference with those is that they are not ISF credited because they haven't been calibrated to that format. However, I found that the filmmaker mode or cinema was probably the best one to go with. One thing that many reviewers that have looked at this projector have noticed is that this does a really good job in HDR mode. And actually the differences between the standard, the cinema home and game optimizer and even filmmaker mode are not that different. It just does a good job right out of the box. But again, I probably would say the filmmaker mode or cinema home would be the ones that I would go with. This projector also has electronic focus, which again you can access from the menu screen. However, I did find that with this electronic focus, the actual test pattern that they gave you, I could have done with a little bit more information on there. Now, you just literally go from left to right, moving the lens, which does it obviously electronically, and then you'll see the differences on the screen. However, because there's just not that much information on the screen, I would have preferred to have a little bit more, because then you would have really got the information needed. And I found that sometimes I came out of it, and it still wasn't quite in focus. But once you do get it there, it stays there, and then hopefully you won't have to touch that again. Navigating through WebOS is absolutely fine. I would say that it's not as quick as my latest C1 OLED or C2 OLED. It's probably more comparable to the C10 from a couple of years ago. Applications seem to load within a reasonable amount of time. It's a little bit slow, but not too bad at all. It's certainly not that noticeable. And one thing to mention with this projector is it does support Netflix right out of the box. You do not need to use any other plugin like a Fire Stick, Apple TV, or anything else. It does work well. Okay, so I've now plugged my cable box in so that you can get an idea of how this performs just running normal standard TV. And I think it does a pretty good job. I really like the colours on this. Now, it is 85% of the DCI-P3 colour gamut. It has a contrast ratio of 2 million to 1 and the brightness is 2,500 ANSI lumens. Now, what I would say is that in a darkish room, this is during the day by the way, but I've got my blind down behind it and in a second I'll open the blind so that you can see the difference. One thing that I've noticed with this projector is that depending on what you're putting through it will depend on the picture quality in a lighter room or a dark room. So for instance, now I'm opening the blind and I think for SDR TV, for cable TV, this does a great job even in a bright room. And literally right behind this screen is a big bright window and as you can see the room is very bright. Now there are some settings on this projector which are pretty clever. It does have an automatic brightness and that means it's got an ambient sensor automatically built in that recognizes the lighting conditions and then it will automatically adjust. Now some people like that type of thing. I am prefer to be someone that sets it automatically myself as and when I'm watching it because if I want it on then great. If I don't, well, it can be a little bit annoying. But for those of you that just want to turn a projector on and then have that do the work, well then that might be brilliant for you. Darker scenes in HDR content, I noticed that that didn't handle as well in a lighter room. Now, my own personal opinion is, is it's no hassle at all to just lower a blind. In fact, I've got an electric blind behind, which I'm going to press coming down now, and you'll see the difference in how this screen pops when the blind is closed. And remember, this is still during the day. There's still light coming through the doorway, which is open. There's uh, a little bit of ambient light coming through the blind, and obviously you've got those two little bulbs underneath. But the picture suddenly pops and everything is looking good again. So it's no hassle to do that and I think some people work just to worry too much about having a projector doing a really good job in a beautiful sunlit room which in all honesty you really shouldn't be watching it in that type of condition. 
Now I'll come on to gaming in just a few moments, but as you can see, if you've got a dark room like this, then this picture just absolutely wows. It looks so impressive, and on a big screen, it is just hard to deny how good this projector is. Now it's not absolutely perfect, but those of you that are coming from a TV, especially an LG TV, well you'll slide straight into knowing how this works. With the WebOS function, it makes the transition absolutely seamless. And as I mentioned before, HDR content and SDR content is great. Now sometimes measurements of projectors and calibration can confuse because this being only 85% of the DCI P3 color gamut, you might think that the colors were a little bit off. But pretty much every single thing I put through this projector just looked natural, not oversaturated at all. It looked slightly on the warm side, which in my preference is better than being on the cool side, but it just looked really, really good. And so therefore I was impressed with it and it didn't need that much tweaking at all. Now, we're going to come on to gaming in just a second, and that is an area where I think that certainly for the next model, it can certainly be improved. But again, there aren't that many 4K ultra short throw laser projectors that handle gaming very well. What I would say is that if you are an occasional gamer, then great. Don't be fooled by the fact that this has got an HDMI 2.1 port. This doesn't support 4K at 120Hz, and there is no variable refresh rate, and the input lag is around 50 to 55 milliseconds. It does have ALLM, which is Auto Low Latency Mode, and it comes with Game Optimizer, which was introduced on the TVs around a year or so ago. And as you can see, you can go in and change from first-person shooter to role-playing games, to real-time strategy, and to standard. And you can go in and make some adjustments to the black stabilizer and the white stabilizer. But from my experience, this wasn't just quite as effective as what it is on their TVs. But it's nice just to go in and have a little tweak, and you never know, you might find a setting that you like. Those of you with an iOS device will be pleased that this has AirPlay 2 and that worked brilliantly and to send photos and videos right to the projector was just an absolute breeze. So simple and they did look really good as well and there was no delay at all. So my friends, in summary, I think that this is a really good option for those of you that want to step into the world of ultra short throw laser projectors for the first time. I love the design, I love the remote, I love the picture quality with pretty much anything that you put through it. This is probably not a gamer's projector, but for TV, SDR and HDR content, this does fantastically well. Obviously, like any projector, it works at its best in a pitch black room, but it doesn't do a terrible job just in a lightish room with the blind down. I think I might have to do some head-to-heads with other ultra short throw laser projectors that I have and we'll see which one comes out on top. But if you want more information about this projector, check out the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching it. Any questions, leave a comment as well and I'll do my very best to answer them. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video from All Things Tech.